In the fishes and basal tetrapods, we will be discussing about jaws and fish evolution. Jaws make up the important part of the skeleton and it is very important part in a way that it is helping an organism to develop a particular niche. With the help of uh, jaws, the uh, animal can hunt or it can devour some different plants as well, which it won't be able to do without the jaw. So that's why whenever we talk about the development of the jaws, which was first developed in the fish, it, relate, it is related to the evolution of the fish as well. So as they developed jaw, they evolved rapidly as well. So we are going to discuss about the fish evolution and the jaws. So the first jaws, uh, the basal vertebrates lagged jaws. The jaws probably evolved during the Ordovician period. So the, the vertebrates that were the first formed, they didn't have the jaw. And the first vertebrate to ever form the jaw, these were the fishes. The oldest jaw bearing fishes were the placoderm, such as Cocosteus. And here you can see a picture of jawed fish of the demonian, the placoderm Costius. You can see that they have the head shield and trunk shield, right? So remember that when we said that their body is covered, just like an armored fish, and they have the pectoral fin, pelvic fin, anal fin. Right? So their fins are not much more pronounced and these were the first jawed fish and these were the fish that first developed the jaws. So and then there comes the chondriac thions. The chondriac thions are the fishes that contain the cartilaginous skeleton. Chondra, uh, wherever the word chondric comes, that means the, uh, uh, the cartilage. So the first shark like chondric theans or the cartilaginous fish came on the scene during the early Devonian period. So this, mean, this means that these fishes were the ancestors of modern day sharks. And then there comes the acanthodians, uh, small fishes mostly range in 50 to 200 millimeter in length and they bore numerous spines at the front of each fin and space rows on their uh, underside. So these were very small fish and they have developed uh, some spines in the front of each of their fins as well as on their underside and these spines help them uh, to not become the prey of other animals or other fishes. So here you can see the jawed fish of the Acanthodian climatius. So you can see the dorsal fin spines and these spines are helpful in not uh, being eaten, right? So there are the pectoral fin and these were the jawed fish as well. So intermediate spines, pelvic spine, anal fin spine. So there are different spines present and these fish are acanthodian climatious fishes. And then there comes the bony fishes. The, uh, as the name indicates that these were the fish that developed the bone structure inside of the cartilage in their skeleton. So the osteotheans, ost, os, wherever the a word os comes that means the bone. So uh, the bony fish also appear in the Devonian and they had the two groups. One are the ray fins and other one are the low fins. And why do we call them? Because the ray fins are just like the rays radiate from one structure. They are having the fins like that and lobe fins were rounded lobe like fins that we will be seeing in the picture as well. So the ray fins were, were those with the ray-like fins and the actinotrigians and the ancestors of the most, uh, most fishes today from carp to the salmon or seahorse to the tuna. So these were the modern fishes uh, from, uh, which are evolved from the ray fins. And then there comes the uh, lobe fins. The lobe fins are the ancestors of the rest of the tetrapods. So here you can see the jawed fish of the demonian, the actinotrigian bony fish which is chiro lapis so here you can see that their fins are just like a rays come out of somewhere right so they are having the trigonal structure but as compared to the lobed fish which you will see in the next picture you can see that they are having the rounded just like lobe like fins so these are the jawed fish of demonian the lobe fin osteolapis so this osteolapis is lobe fin and these lobe fins are responsible for the evolution of tetrapods which later colonized the terrestrial environment.